After a very limited release in Japan, Crypto Collector is coming to Kickstarter this upcoming week. Now let's just put it out there right away. This is our own copy that we spent our own money on at the game market last year. We are not being paid to do this video. It's actually just been sitting in a review box over in that corner over there sitting. But when we read the tweet announcing its Kickstarter, we put it to the front of the line so that we could give you our opinions on it before the Kickstarter launch, because that's what we do in this series. And what is this series? Well, minasan konnichiwa, and welcome to the board game Dojo's Import or Not series, where we take a look at East Asian games like Crypto Collector and let you know if they're worth your hard-earned money to import or not. Today, we're going to go over some of the rules of Crypto Collector. Not everything, but just enough so that you can get a taste for it. We're going to look at the sales pitch and whether it accomplishes what it sets off to do. We're going to tell you who it might be for and who might need to invest elsewhere. So let's start off with the sales pitch, and I'm going to read this directly from the game market page. Now, this game is a simple yet annoying set collection and auction game about buying and selling digital art. Well, let's see if it meets that mark by going over a bit of the game. Now, unlike some of the other games we've covered on this channel, this game, Kickstarter at least, not the original version, but the Kickstarter, will come with an English manual. So we're not going to go over each little detail, but we're just going to go over enough that you can get a taste for what this game is and if it's going to be something that you're interested in, and enough that it makes sense for our opinions later. Crypto Collector is at the heart of it an auction game with heavy set collection and some sprinklings of tableau building. The art might be the draw of the game, but the real stars are these chips. They are numbered 1 to 4, and each round, players will go around one at a time, putting them on the board in order. So everyone must play their 1 first, then their 2, then their 3, then their 4, you get the picture. At its simplest, these are the bidding chips. Simply put them underneath one of these owner cards, and you bid that much on them. Highest bid, after everyone lays down their chips, wins the card. So what are these owner cards? Well, for one thing, they give you something. Some of them might give you extra income throughout the game. Some of them might give you owner chips that let you buy art cards later, or maybe even end game scoring bonuses. Owner chips are important because these owner cards also second as a currency by themselves. But let's take a look at those art cards before we go more into that one. Remember these chips I talked about earlier? Well, I say they can be bidding chips because what they more resemble are your number of choices you have each round. Instead of forbidding, you can instead put the chip down and say you were going to buy an art card instead. For example, maybe you don't want to bid two, so you instead use your second turn to buy an art card. Now, each card has two choices of how to pay for it. You either can pay cash, which is very expensive, or you may turn in owner cards of that same color. And these owner chips, they're wild. So you can see that it is an agonizing decision whether to bid on something that gives you good stuff or use your turn to buy something that will at the end of the game get you points. Because at the end of the game, unless you have certain endgame points, your leftover money means nothing. It doesn't matter. Only your points do. And speaking of points, let's talk a little bit about how you get those. I noted earlier that some of the owner cards might give you endgame bonuses or might give you points based on how many of each art card you have. But each art card itself will give you points as well. Different types give you different set bonuses, like the sailors that give you a set bonus if you have the old and young version of the sailor, or these weird things that give you bonus points for every card after the second one you own, or these cards that give you set bonuses if you own the whole set, but you have to be careful because there are a lot of repeating cards in there and you don't get the set bonus if you just buy the same segment of the full piece. You can also get bonuses for collecting the sets of rarities in the corners, or endgame bonuses for collecting two sailors and three red cards, but also there's bonuses for just having tons of money at the end of the game. I think you get the point. There are a lot of ways to get points and lots of small little rules and moving parts in this game that I'll let you dive into later. Let's get back to the sales pitch. You know, the one I read for you earlier, the one that says it's a simple yet annoying game. And I have to be fair, I'm not sure I completely agree with Google Translate's word for annoying. The word for annoying can also be translated as to hard or troubling or anxiety inducing. Basically, something that can give you a headache, something that's brain burning, or in board gaming terms, crunchy. Or maybe it's just frustrating. Simple is one of those words that I think I use too often. It is such a quick and easy word to tell you that it is on the easier end of the spectrum. And yet we use it so often that it becomes almost meaningless because it's so relative. It's so subjective. And the thing about it is, is 
simple auction game is something that we already have a lot of good examples of. For example, the excellent for sale is a staple. It's a classic for a reason. Or QE, that's much newer, but still it works phenomenally well with new gamers. But if you're somebody like me who likes auction games and has no really problem like something with Furnace, this is not going to be a problem for you to grok, to understand, to really get the rules of. That is, as long as you can get past this rulebook. Which would be a feat because this rulebook is terrible. The examples and the pictures are few and far between, and when they are there, they're not very helpful. The layout has too much print in too small of space. Let's see if I can find like a good page here. So that's what a typical page of this rulebook will look like. And it just feels like it was the case of a design team trying to put too much print and too much stuff into the tiniest space possible, maybe to save room in the box. And while I can commend them for that motivation to do that, it actually ended up making a game that is labeled, is sold as being something that simple into a game that is much harder to understand than it needed to be. Now, I know you might be out there saying, Eric, you're not even a native speaker. Eric, maybe others get it. Eric, maybe you're just dumb. To the first point, you're right, I'm not a native speaker, but I'm not the one who actually read the rule book. My wife is, and she is a native Japanese speaker, and she, this is the first time that I've seen her look up from the rule book and just go, I have no idea what is going on. To the second, maybe you're right. Maybe other people did get it, but judging by online comments on sites like Bologay, which is kind of like Japan's board game geek, others had problems with it as well, communicating that it took them to the third or fourth game for them to fully understand the rules of it. Like us, actually, because it took us four games to fully wrap our heads around everything that was going on as well. And to the last point, maybe you're just dumb, Eric? Well, actually, I, I don't really have a counter point to that one, but it does hurt my feelings a little bit. So that's the simple part out of the way, and I hope you stuck around because I actually think this game is quite good. It is perplexing, it is anxiety inducing, it does give me those good crunchy decisions. Let's start with something I alluded to earlier, these lovely little chips. The fact that there are seven rounds in the game with four turns in each round means that you have 28 chances to make the wrong decision. <laughs> sure, the early game you would think would be right to build up that early tableau, build up that income so that the rest of the game you could buy up all the art. But while you were doing that, actually everybody else was busy buying up all the art that you wanted and your set collection hopes and dreams are over. In fact, it is completely possible sometimes to buy a piece of art on your very first turn, which in my games have never felt to be such a power move. But it is always a risk. Is this the turn to buy that piece of art I want? Wait, I think I can buy that owner card for cheap if I use this one as a bid instead. But if I get that owner card, I think Hikari over there will buy the art I want because she's been going after the purple art too. Decisions, decisions, and as the games go by, those decisions get harder and harder as the owner cards get better and better with rewards that couldn't possibly be ignored. Right? And the fact that you can always choose to pay in owner cards or in cash is such a decision too. You'll be sitting there looking at your owner cards thinking, wow, this card right here gives me such a good income for the rest of the game. But at the same time, I don't want to spend 25 currency on that one art card because that's going to pretty much bankrupt me. It's about timing and it's about taking a chance when you think you might not get another one. And you might not. It is both an interesting thing for some and bad for others that cards will repeat themselves like this quite often. So if you're going for the full painting, the same part of the painting might just keep coming out and over and over and you might never get to complete that art that you want to complete for your set bonus or for your end game goals. And as soon as that different piece comes out, everybody's paying attention because everybody wants that. So now let's get into who this might be for and who it might not be for. And let's start off with the latter, who it is not for. If in that sales pitch about a simple and annoying auction set collection game about digital art, if the thing that drove you to that, if the thing that attracted you was the simple part of it, I'm not sure that this is going to be up your alley. I've already mentioned for sale, QE, there are a lot of games that are going to probably be cheaper. I have, we haven't seen the price yet, but this does retail for about $30 in Japan, so I'm guessing with shipping it's going to be more. But we already have great examples of a simple auction game that I think for if you're looking for something for new to gaming people, this is just not going to be it. 
Now, granted, the turn structure might be on the simple end of things. Again, we're not talking about a Splatter Spellin or a Lacerda here, but simple is not exactly the way that I would describe this, just based on how many different amounts of points, all the different amounts of scoring, all the different ways there are to do things in this game. The second person that I don't think this for is if you didn't like Wingspan. Now, hold on. Hang on with me for a second, because I actually do think this is a pretty good description of it. This game is not going to be for you. A lot of the, the complaints I've heard from people who don't like Wingspan are that they'll get those end of goal cards at the beginning and they kind of will push them down a certain direction. But due to the randomness of the cards, it might not have been even possible for them to accomplish that goal. But someone at the other end of the table has a whole engine running very smoothly and are going to get a ton of end game points. Well, the same thing can happen in Crypto Collector. You might get an end goal card and it's going to push you in a certain direction. Maybe you need a lot of sailors. Maybe you need a lot of those weird green cards but then it just comes out that somebody else on the table needed the cards that came out and none of the sailors are coming out that you need and meanwhile them on the other end are falling into combos over themselves they're falling into set collection bonuses they're falling into end goal bonuses and you're climbing a mountain that you didn't even know existed you're already behind from the word go and that can be a bitter pill to swallow now for us we enjoy it we think it's just oh that's just bad luck maybe we'll get it next game but if you're somebody who really doesn't like that especially you didn't like wingspan because it can happen this is not going to be the game for you because we've had multiple games where that exact thing has happened but there are many that i think will also like this one first of all it's just probably easy to say this but if you're a fan of auction games i think this one is interesting while not being revolutionary i think this one won't be too hard to pick up for you and We've been playing games in about 30 to 60 minutes, meaning that this is a great filler plus game for game night. I also think that this is a good auction game if your group has a lot of different play styles that they like to play. Other auction games like The Fabulous Modern Art are enhanced when people are willing to role play and give their energy into the game. There is something that makes that game turn into something special. But this game is very solitaire but has interaction. It's almost like you are focusing on your own board solving a puzzle and other people are getting in your way. It's that solitaire but having interaction through the bidding mechanism. Now you of course if your group is a group that likes to goad somebody into making an auction or likes to block other people because you know that they're doing that be a little bit mean then this game is definitely able to be played that way too. But if you want just kind of a nice auction game that is all about everyone trying to solve their own little puzzle with an auction mechanism, then I think that this game is really, it is has a really interesting niche in that category of people who like to play an auction game but have so many different play styles in their group that they can't all agree on one. Overall, this is a solid game with a lot to like. We had a few nitpicks here and there, like how the art didn't go to the end of the cards and in a game about art not really showing that art really nice and big was a bit of a weird decision. But for that one specifically, they've already announced that they're fixing that in the Kickstarter version of it. So I'm really confident that they're going to um, take the comments that have been said online and fix some of those things. But even if they weren't, this is already a really solid game with a lot of crunchy decisions. It makes me want to go back to it again and again and just improve on my score. We have enjoyed our plays of it a lot, and I'm really glad that it's getting to more people on this Kickstarter. If anything that we talked about is at least somewhat intriguing to you, I think that this is probably worth the back for you. We are actually giving this a one star, which those new to the channel, one star just means that it's not an essential for everybody's collection, but if you're an auction fan or something that we said intrigued you, it really is worth the import. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll get to them as soon as possible. Arigatou gozaimashita. Janne!